Okay, we're going to start our next chapter, which is on consumer credit, so section 3.1. Uh, we got a bunch of definitions for this section, so again, pause it if you need to. Uh, credit is when you buy something uh, but pay later. Debitors, these are organizations who buy on credit. Creditors, these are organizations that extend credit. Assets, what you own, your home, your car, cash, what you have in savings, things like that. Earning power is the ability to earn money. Uh, now and in the future, creditors want to know this before they extend you credit. Credit rating, all right, this is a, a report card of your credit. We have credit agencies. These compile records on all users of credit. They keep all of your records. There are three big ones, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, okay? FICA score, this is the Fair Isaac and Company. Uh, it ranges from... 300 to 850, and the higher your number, the better your credit score is. Installment plan. This stores offer credit where customers pay over time, so like a uh, department store, credit card, things like that. Down payment. This is where customers pay part of the sale price at the time of purchase. Finance charge or interest. Fees associated when using the installment plan. So oftentimes you're charging an interest rate for those specific uh, credit cards. Okay, so pause if you need more time for definitions now. Okay, number one, it says Monique buys a $4,700 air conditioning system using an installment plan that requires 15% down. How much is her down payment? So you take your 4,700, multiply that by 15%, which gives you $705 as a down payment. Number two, Jean bought a $1,900.80 snow thrower on the installment plan. The installment agreement included a 10% down payment and 18 monthly payments of $116 each. How much is the down payment? Well, you take your $1,980 times 10% for your down payment of $198. The total amount of, in monthly payments, so 18 monthly payments at $116 gives you $2,088. In monthly payments. So how much did Jean pay for the snow thrower on the installment plan? So you take your down payment of 198 plus your total amount in monthly payments of 2088 equals 2286. What was her finance charge? Well you take your 2286 how much you paid at the end minus how much it actually sold for which is 1980 gives you a finance charge of $306. Number three, Zeke bought a $2,300 bobsled on an installment plan. He made a $450 down payment. He has to make monthly payments of $9,350 for the next two years. How much interest will he pay? So $450 down payment plus $93.50 per monthly payment times 24 pays because it's two years. So 12 times 2 is 24. Okay, put that into the calculator just as you see it. Gives you $26.94. That's how much he paid at the end. Okay, now $26.94 is what he paid, but it actually sold for $2,300. So you subtract the two, and the difference of $3.94 is how much interest he paid to borrow that money. Okay, so $2,300 plus $394 in interest was his total price. Number four. Mazio's appliance store requires a down payment of one-third on all installment purchases. Norton's Depot requires 30% down on all purchases. Which store's down payment rate is lower? So Norton's was 30% and Mazio's was one-third. Well, one-third as a decimal is 0.33. So that would be 33.3%. 30% is less than 33%, so Norton is the better deal. Number five, Adam bought a 1670 custom video game sound system on special no interest plan. He made a down payment of $100 and agreed to pay the entire purchase off in one and a half years. The minimum monthly payment is $10. If he makes the minimum monthly payment up until the last payment, what will the amount of his last payment be? So 1670 minus the $100 down payment gives you 1570. So he owes 1570 for that sound system. 
Okay, now 1570 minus, okay, minus uh, 17 times 10. Okay, the reason why it's 17 is because you're taking a year and a half. Okay, and the reason why it's 17 and not 18 is because we're trying to figure out his last payment. So his last payment would be the 18th payment, okay, because 12 plus 6 is 18. So we're only taking 17 because we need to figure out how much he owes on his last one. So put that into the calculator just as you see it because he's only paying the minimum of 10 bucks. Gives you $1,400, okay? So the amount of his last payment would be 1570 minus 1400 gives you $170 for his last payment. So his 18th payment would be $170. Okay. A layaway plan is similar to an installment plan, but customers but the customer does not receive the merchandise until those paid for. It is held for in the store for a fee. If you purchased a $1700 set of golf clubs on a 9-month layaway plan and had to pay a monthly payment of 201, what is the sum of the monthly payments? What was the fee charged? For the layaway plan. Okay, so we have $201 per month times 9 months. That's what it said in the, in the problem. $201 per month times 9 months gives you $1,809. Okay, that's the sum. That's how much we owe. Okay, now $1,809 minus what the clubs were actually sold for, which was $1,700. So $1,809 minus $1,700 gives you $109. So that $109 difference, that's your fee. Okay? So the sum of the monthly payments was 1809 and the fee was 109. Number 7. Bernie bought a refrigerator at a special sale. The refrigerator regularly sold for 986. No down payment was required. Bernie has to pay $69 per month for a year and a half. What is the average amount Bernie pays in interest each month? Okay, So a year and a half, that's 12 months plus 6 months, that's 18 months. So $69 per month times 18 months gives you $12.42. Okay? That's how much you're paying in the end. So $12.42 minus what the refrigerator sold for, for $9.86, gives you $256 difference. That $256 was the amount total for fees. Okay, so interest, whatever it may be. Okay, so 256 is your total amount. Now, take that 256 and divide it by 18 to figure out how much he's actually paying per month in interest. So 256 divided by 18 equals $14.22 per month in interest and fees. All right, and number eight. The following inequality gives information on your credit scores. Let X represent your credit score. Okay, so remember your credit score ranges from 300 to 850, okay? So part one says, if X is greater than 700, your score is excellent. Between 680 and 700, your score is good. Between 620 and 680, your score should be watched carefully. Between 580 and 620, your credit score, fix that for me on your, on your side, should be low, not good, low. And anything below 580, your credit score is poor. It says if Marianne's credit score is low, but she receives 40 points for paying off some delinquent debts, is it possible for her credit rating to be now good? Okay, so low would mean um, the highest low would be 619. Okay, so if you look right up here at the top, between 580 and 620, okay, so the highest low that she can get would be 619. Add 40 to that gives you 659. Well, 659 is going to fall in this range right here between 620 and 680. All right, and that credit score should be watched carefully. All right, in order to be good, you need to at least be 681. Okay, 680 to 700 is considered good. Okay, so she needs she has a long way to kind of get there yet. So that answer would be no. And number nine, last one. 
Bianca has a credit line of eight thousand dollars. She had previously she had a previous balance of five sixty seven ninety one, and made a payment of twelve hundred. Her total purchases are nine eighty six seventy nine, and she has been charged a ten dollar finance charge. What is her available credit? Okay, so we're going to start with her previous balance, five sixty seven ninety one. Okay, she made a payment of twelve hundred, so we're going to subtract that out of her account. Okay. Her total purchases were nine eighty six seventy nine, so we're going to add that in. Okay, to figure out what her credit. So, we're trying to figure out how much credit she has left. Okay, think of a credit as uh, a starting point. That's your starting balance. Okay, and then we have a finance charge of ten dollars, so we're going to add that on there. Okay, so her ending balance was three sixty four seventy, three sixty four seventy. Okay. Eight thousand dollars minus three sixty four seventy gives you a total available balance of seven thousand six thirty five thirty. So that's how much she has left to spend on her credit card, for example. Okay, let me review that again. On her credit card, she owed five sixty seven ninety one. She made a payment. Okay, so if you want to think of it a little bit differently, we can do that as well. All right, I'm going to erase these six, these signs in front here. Okay, she owed 567. Okay, so that's a negative. She owes that to her credit card. She made a payment, so we're going to add that on. Okay, her total purchases were 986.79. We're going to subtract that off. And her finance charge is $10. We're going to subtract that off. So the only thing that she paid into her credit card was the $1,200. Everything else came off. You notice you're going to get the same ending balance of 36470, which gives you your same available credit of 763530.